it is Tuesday I'm lying it's Monday um, excuse my nappy behavior facial and everything um, I've just been chilling I worked out this morning with Ellie and then I went to Sephora to handle some business and then I've been working on my channel working on new shirts for Queen Living if you haven't gotten your Queen Living shirt or sweatshirt or hoodie or cane shirt or a sweatshirt or a hoodie the link will be above as well as below so make sure you go ahead and get yours um yeah i'm working on that trying to expand that a little bit further looking at some new styles different styles different colors and things of that nature so that is soon to come um if you don't know i'm, I'm the person that like has a thousand things on her mind at one time and it's kind of crazy like I'm thinking about my channel I'm thinking about work figuring out what I'm gonna wear to work figure out what I'm gonna meal prep for the week so I don't spend any money eating out um, figuring out what days I'm gonna Zumba figuring out if I'm gonna actually do the gym this week because I need to get that into my day-to-day -day as well um, and working on business in general and growing as a brand so my brain be going a thousand miles per hour, nonetheless. But I'm about to get up and wash these makeup brushes because I have a photo shoot that I'm doing makeup for tonight for my girls. Um, can't wait to see those photos once they're done. Um, then I'm probably going to come back home and meal prep, which is going to be a task in itself. Um, tonight is Monday so just really getting ready for the work week but I'm gonna try and take you all along with me um, yeah as far as I can go I don't really know if this photo shoot is private or not they really didn't say so if they don't want me to record I won't record um, if they're okay with it just putting snippets in that's cool um, but if I am, you'll see it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Let me actually, while I'm here, I'm going to pull up the, um, blah, 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 pull up some of the shirts that I'm thinking about, um, in the comments below, let me know what you're thinking. Do you like the colors? What colors would you like in these hoodies or sweatshirts or t-shirts? Um, I know it's getting colder here in Ohio. It's like we went from summer to summer. To winter no fall in between but it's getting colder and we're on a layer up and sweatshirts and hoodies are perfect for right now I think I'm gonna do a long sleeve shirt the next launch um, so yeah let me pull that up and show you and then you guys let me know what you're thinking yay or nay chitty all right one second so as you can see I'm constantly thinking of new designs new prints new whatever um, on different things. I have pages of ideas, so my mind constantly goes. I have this one here. I really like this idea, um, especially on a white t-shirt or um, a white t-shirt or um, a crew neck, but I like this design. And then, okay, one second, one second, one second, one second. Um, I was also thinking about, give me one second. I was also thinking about this design here. I love this hunter green and this cream together so that may be an option as well um, I don't know I'm working I don't know I'm gonna keep working on some things I like these fall colors like the hunter greens and the creams and um, things of that nature but let me get up and Excuse me, y'all. Uh, sorry.
sorry again for that noise. You know, we got that space heater on. We ain't trying to turn on the heat yet, but I probably need to do a face mask because I'm put so much makeup on this weekend. But um, while I go clean these brushes, I'm gonna throw in a clip from last night. Um, I went to a it was a brunch, a late, a woman's brunch, and it's she is visionary um presents women in blanc um, which is women in white and it was a event centered around domestic violence physical emotional psychological um domestic violence and the event was amazing so i'm gonna throw in that clip or a few clips of that and then when i come back i'll probably be dressed and about to go on about my day, but I will check in with y'all later. Ladies, good afternoon. I want to tell you first that I'm very honored to be here, to be to welcome you to She is Visionary Women in the Book. And of course, that normally means that we all dress in white, but today we are sharing this month with the Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So I see that there are a lot of ladies here wearing purple. Wearing purple to acknowledge that domestic violence is in all of our lives. We're in purple to acknowledge that we can do something to make a difference in this particular offense. Um, but it's, it's, it's being associated and attached and connected to someone who's willing to love you beyond the hurt. But on the other side of it, if you have experienced abuse, allowing yourself to receive the love that you deserve. Because oftentimes, the challenge is that the abuser is gone, the experience has happened, but the trauma, the pictures and the mental pictures that you replayed, as I say, that mental movie that we replayed over and over, it stops us and it impedes on us progressing. So I want each and every one of you to know that you are deserving of the love that God speaks about and what the judge just spoke about. I mean, just spoke about, I mean, just really have an understanding of who you are. You know, you hear that a lot, love yourself, love yourself, but let me tell you something, it is true. Because guess what? If you love yourself, you will attract people that will love you. Mm. If you don't love yourself, you will attract people who don't. So you want to receive what you can get. <laughs> oh, okay. I was about to say, we're in this nice restaurant, this mic don't work. <laughs> Manage your <girl. laughs> A lot of it is our behavior that we seem to think is acceptable because our grandmother survived and our mother survived and we think that it's acceptable and okay for us because it may come in a little different form or fashion than the previous generation. So first of all, here to say that is not true, that is not you. Um, and as Jay said earlier, something that we just have to learn as women to accept. Fell in love with myself at 45, so speaking from my own experience. But my story became deep when I'm now living the aftermath of feeling the effect of domestic violence. April 1st, 2015, at exactly 12 o'clock noon, my life changed. I received a phone call that no parent ever wants to hear. And that is that not only one of my children were gone, but mm. two of my children were murdered at the same time. Oh my God. My daughter, Janaya Harvison, at the age of 29, a local business owner here, was going through a divorce, had actually completely separated for over a year from her and her husband. We thought life was great. They were shared parenting. They had been through the court. Everything was fine. All they had to do was finalize the divorce come June 23rd, 2015. I don't tell you how well we thought life was. He threw a birthday party 72 hours before he killed her. Mm -hmm. That's how great we thought things were. We spent the whole weekend, um, Friday partying, Saturday partying, Sunday we were at Chuck E. Cheese because see, my children's birthdays and I were all in the same week. Mm -hmm. So leading up to April 1st of every year, I had to start out with my daughter-in-law's birthday, the 21st of March. My daughter, who is now deceased, March 24th, which is also now my wedding anniversary. My birthday is March 29th and then April 1st. 
So the, without giving you a whole lot, but trying to give you what's needed is the aftermath. The aftermath is that as a mother, a grandmother, my daughter's right hand, I'm now trying to figure out what I call a new normal life without two children. Mm -hmm. Losing my son and daughter, were they were both actually my babies. They were the youngest two of my four children. I struggle with right now being in a situation where I am raising my daughter's two children who are now four and seven. And my, probably my biggest heartbeat is every day loving on a little girl who says and calls me mommy because that's all she knows. Because see, when her mother died, she was 22 months old, she mm. don't even realize her mother's no longer here. My grandson just shared this with me two days ago. He woke up and uh, he's like the coolest seven-year-old. <laughs> he says, I'm going out with this woman, I'm waiting up for school. And he says, yeah, yeah. Can I talk to you in private for a minute? <laughs> I'm looking around because ain't nobody in the room but me and my husband have this conversation. He said, I had a dream. I said, okay, well, what'd you dream about? He said, I dreamed we went to the cemetery and my mom was standing there and you gave her some flowers and it made her so happy. He said, and then she just walked away. I said, well, how does that make you feel? Are you sad? He said, yeah. I said, are you angry? He said, a little. I said, do you miss your mom? He said, yeah. But even more so, he said, I'm worried because I'm starting to forget her. No. And it's only been two years. So I say all that to say because I can give you a lot of details and, and they'll come at a later time. But right now, what I'm learning to focus on is the downside to this is, is that as individuals, when we make a decision, we have to remember that your decision does not affect you alone. So when you're in that heated argument, as we sometimes get with our significant others, if you're gonna bust the windows out of his car, and you're gonna flatten some tires, you don't even do like I did over the years. You know, I glued some blocks together, and you know, I've scraped some cars, Oh, being honest. <laughs> but at the time, I didn't realize what could have happened. And so now, two years, almost three years in, I have daily time to reflect of what I'm living. And the aftermath is, is that my life and every life that is associated with my son and daughter, our lives are now forever changed because of one man's decision. Now what he did is, I've come up with this little model, I said he reacted to whatever action she may have done. What he didn't know how to do was respond. And most of us, that, that's what we do, we react. Never thinking that when he pulled up and he decided to not just shoot him once, because I'm gonna give you that detail because it is important. When he pulled up, he pulled up actually in my son's car. And my son was sitting in his car because they had traded vehicles. He walked up and he said those words that many of us have heard before. You think I'm gonna just let you leave me and take this and take that? And so they're having this little argument and my son who at the time was 23, he's about 140 pounds, all of maybe five, eight, five, nine, little dude, sitting in the car and from what I was told, all he did is put his hand on the door and he said, hey, and that's when the gun appeared. He shot my son once in the head to the right of his temple. My daughter then realizes there's a gun, so she does like most victims do. She begins to plead for her life. And she realized that the pleading wasn't going to work, so she did what she thought was best. She turned to run. And when she turned to run, he shot her in the back of the head. But the story didn't end there. He went back to the vehicle that my son was sitting in and proceeded to unload three more bullets in my son. He went back to my daughter as her body lay flat on the ground and pumped four more bullets in the back of her back. 
Then there was the shootout between him and the police. Police says, well, we couldn't shoot to kill him because he never pointed the vehicle, the weapon at them. Because this was also at the time when it was a little heightened about, you know, police brutality and killing our black men. So they were a little apprehensive. As one officer told me, they were actually very upset that they couldn't. Because he didn't murder them, he executed them. All over things. Being honest. Things and the fact that as a young man that I just <laughs> Y'all young folks gonna have to just Google him, okay? All right. <laughs> so Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was one of my favorite movies. Y'all remember this? Okay, well, this is gonna be good. Okay, so Indiana Jones, he finds himself in this dark, creepy cave on his way to the temple. And there's two people that are with him, right? He has his sidekick, that little cute Asian boy, right? And then Marion, who is his love interest. So follow me on this, okay? He's walking through this deep, dark, creepy cave, trying to get to the temple. And he, at every step that he takes, he hears this crunching sound. Y'all know what it is? Every step, he's like, what is this? So he lifts up his lantern, only to see that the cave is full of bugs. Y'all, I'm one of those nerdy people where I have to go look up to see like, was this real? Was it a special effect? So I went and Googled it. Steven Spielberg put 50,000 cockroaches, 30,000 beetles in this cave. So this is real life. This is nasty. Y'all got it? So he's rocking along in this cave and then the sidekick accidentally steps on a boot trap. The next thing you know, this boulder comes out of nowhere, right? And, and locks them in this room. And, and then, and then, <laughs> and then the ceiling starts caving in. And this is Indiana Jones, so it's not a regular ceiling. The ceiling has these huge, sharp metal thorns that are hanging down from them. The ceiling is caving in. And so he yells for Marion and he says, Marion, I need you to go to this hole over here. Y'all remember this? Y'all need to, I need you to go to this hole over here and I need you to look in the hole and there is a lever somewhere in there you're gonna have to feel around. And I need you to pull that lever so that we can be free. So Marion goes to the hole, y'all. Listen, she looks in the hole. What, what was in the hole, y'all remember? Bugs. And they weren't just like little bugs, they were big bugs, like put a leash and walk them down the street bugs. They were huge. And so, and so she looks in there, and, and then there was this slime. This slime looks like it was breathing, y'all. Like it's, I mean, like you could be sticking your hand into like a mouth, you know what I mean? Or like a throat or something, it was nasty. So she looks in there, and she's no, I'm player. Uh, can't do no today. And he says, just like this, So Mary gets her courage up, and she, she, she don't look, right? And she's like, I'm just gonna put my hand in there. She reaches her hand in there, she feels around, she finds the lever, she pulls it back, then the boulder rolls back, and the ceiling comes up, and now he's free. And this is the process of healing. Because sometimes it gets dark. I know it, I've been there, six pills a day. Mm. Crying every day. It gets dark. It gets ugly. It gets creepy. You are going to be scared. It gets stressful. And at some point, unexpected things happen. Have you ever been through something and, and you're going through this and then other stuff starts happening? Like, I'm going through this and in my car right now. Girl. I'm trying to get through this, and now my mom is in the hospital. I'm trying to get through this, and, and now I lost my job. Like, unexpected things happen. And the pain, it hurts so much that you feel like you are going to die. And the problem is we rely so much on what it is that we see. And I want y'all to hear me on this. We focus so much on what's in front of us Right? I, I, all I can see is the stress. All I can see is the pain. All I can see is that every man I've ever loved has hurt me. All I can see is this depression. And we focus so much on that that we can't even see that 
the healing is just an arm's length away. It's right here. And right on the other side of that is healing. Right on the other side of that, that right here, on the tips of my fingers, is joy, is, is unconditional love. It's right there. All right, y'all. I know I'm so mad. I can kind of fix that face or whatever. It is freezing out here. I can't deal. Like, the heck? Um, one second. Because a girl is coming. Yeah. Chargers. Y'all just bouncing around. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry. All right. I'm about to head to my friend's house and do this lovely makeup for the cheek guys. And yeah. So let's get to it. Give me hip, give me hip. Little thickness, you feel me? Little booty pop. The real slim thick. Just up with that hand though. That hand like that? No. No, no, no. you know i look a little pale but um i am home from the video shoot or video shoot photo shoot um that was so much fun we started at like seven and i'm just now leaving or getting home and it's almost two in the morning um so that was fun probably because we talked too much but whatever you know so that was fun and yeah my messy closet but i'm about to take a shower Put my bonnet on and go to sleep, you dick. Um, I have to be to work at 8 in the morning and it is still so I should probably go to sleep. Um, so I'll go to sleep and wake up for the next day. And yeah, so I will see you all in the next video. Um, don't forget to thumbs up this video. Don't forget to share this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already, which I don't really understand why you wouldn't be. But that's neither here nor there i won't talk about you but you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button it's right there because i see it you see it i see it we all see it just hit the button just hit it so i'll see you in the next one guys see you in the next one